Welcome to the Drexel Interview. I'm your host, Paula Morantz Cohen, speaking to you from Drexel's Westfall Gallery. Today our guest is Yuri Gogotsi, Professor of Materials Engineering and Director of the A.J. Drexel Nanotechnology Institute. Dr. Gogotsi has been instrumental in making the university a center for the cutting edge field of nanoscience and nanotechnology. Welcome to the Drexel interview, Yuri Gagotsi. Thank you, Paula. Um, we often hear the term nanoscience and nanotechnology used interchangeably. I wonder if you would define both terms and explain how they differ and how they overlap. I think the difference between nanoscience and nanotechnology is the same as the difference between science and technology. Mm -hmm. Science creates fundamentals that we need to develop technology. Technology is about engineering and about making real things, making products from which uh, everyone can benefit. Applications, in other words. Yes. And is that the area that you're working on here at, at Drexel? Uh, yes. And uh, my group works in both areas, in nanoscience and nanotechnology. It means that uh, we are working on uh, improving understanding of processes occurring at uh, the nanoscale. And at the same time, uh, we are developing new products. We are developing new materials, new technologies uh, that can be used uh, to uh, make uh, useful devices. OK, when you say the nano scale, could you now, how does that differ from, say, the micro scale? Well, uh, there is a difference. Uh, nano uh, and micro is 1,000 times difference here. Okay. So it means that if we talk about microelectronics mm -hmm. and compare it with nanoelectronics, nano will be a thousand times smaller. I see. To give you an idea of what uh, we mean uh, talking about nano, uh, 100 nanometers, and this is a maximum size uh, people consider to be uh, limiting the nanoscale, is 1,000 times smaller than uh, the thickness of a human hair. So we're talking about things that are at least thousand times smaller than uh, our hairs, and uh, the lower limit, one nanometer. This is the size of uh, three, four atoms only. Wow! So we're talking about very really small. very small things. And how does this translate then into a change in technology? What sorts of things can we imagine? Seeing? Well, uh, there are really many things that we can imagine, and some that we cannot imagine yet, because we are just learning about new effects possible at this nanoscale. Mm -hmm. Materials change many properties. For example, something th uh, that was opaque can become transparent if you use very small particles. Mm. This is what allows people to make, for example, uh, scratch-resistant coatings on glass lenses using this principle. Scratch-resistant coatings on eyeglasses, right. for example. I see. Uh, because otherwise, uh, when uh, made thicker, they will, would not be transparent. Mm. When they're that small at the scale, they are transparent, and they still have properties of hard materials. And also, uh, materials can change color very often. Size of particles for so-known quantum dots, they're very small particles, a few nanometer in size, Mm -hmm. Depends uh, or size of particle determines the color. So by just changing particle size, we can change color of fluorescence of the particles. And how are these? Can you give me some specific examples of applications of this? For example, the color change. Mm -hmm. Well, idea. color change is used uh, currently uh, for uh, uh, in cell technology, in medical technology, mm -hmm. as sensors. When certain particles get attached to certain uh, cells, for example, here, yeah. you could identify these particular cells by optically here. Or you can create a, a sensor that will identify certain bacteria or identify uh, certain toxins just by changing color here. So the, so med the medical application. The medical application, application mm -hmm. for this here. But there are many applications for nanoparticles that are also common, like cosmetic applications. Now that interests me, mm -hmm. the cosmetic applications. Actually, in having my makeup put on today, um, a special spray was used um, that is presumably um, um, 
applies very small particles. I wonder if that, in fact, had some relationship to nanotechnology. Uh, it's very possible. Mm. And many cosmetic companies uh, fund nanotechnology research now mm. because small particles of titania are used currently in most of sunscreens. So if you buy a sun lotion, there is a very high probability you may already be using products of nanotechnology if there are very small titania particles. And mm. use of small particles allows the uh, companies to make products with first uh, lower content of the active ingredient. Second, they will be covering uh, skin in a much more uniform manner mm. here. So you get better cosmetic products. So you have a, a smoother application, right. less volume. Right. Yeah. And third, uh, they will be more a will stain for a long time. They basically stick by molecular forces better to our skin. So until you want to remove it intentionally here, oh, it will stay for a much, much longer time. And I'm sure uh, many women uh, oh, will appreciate this. Oh, I love that because this. the makeup comes off my face in an hour. And this means it would, what, is it gravitational forces? That uh, no, actually, at this small scale, mm. gravitational forces are negligible. I see. So if you uh, use small particles, these are uh, so known van der Waals forces or very, very weak uh, forces, but that uh, at this scale become very significant. So they're stronger than gravitational forces. They're stronger than many other forces. So if, for example, just a flow of water could remove larger particles from your skin, small particles will uh, not uh, react uh, and they will stay and they will uh, continue sticking to the skin. So you can make a lipstick uh, that will uh, be lasting for much, much longer uh, okay. than a regular one, and a lot of other uh, nice products. That sounds wonderful. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about some of the other products? And the cosmetics do interest me, I mm -hmm. must say, and it seems to me that there is a tremendous market for that. But are some of the other perhaps more esoteric products? Of course, uh, cosmetic products uh, are probably uh, low-hanging fruit, something that mm -hmm. is available already today. There are other applications of nanotechnology that enable many devices already now. For example, we owe a huge memory of our computers to nanotechnology. Because if you have much smaller particles that store information, you can package much more information in the same volume. As a result of this, hard drives of our computers can store 1,000 times more information probably than 10 years ago. And, so uh, nanotechnology is being used now in our computers? Yes, yeah. absolutely. In computers, digital cameras, cell phones, all of them benefit from nanotechnology. This, are, this is the memory used there. These are lithium batteries that use mm -hmm. carbon nanoparticles, nanoscale graphite, very thin graphite sheets to uh, store energy and many other applications. But definitely scientists and engineers are working today on development of uh, devices that can change our life in the future. I see. One of those are distributed sensors. Uh, sensors that can uh, be incorporated in our clothes, for example, just in the fabric of the clothes here, uh, or in a watch uh, or in jewelry uh, that you wear and provide a lot of information, for example, about uh, state of our bodies here. Whether you have, you will know, or maybe even your doctor, if directly connected, mm. will know if you have fever, if you have any medical conditions, and you will know if uh, you have, uh, for example, contaminated air. Uh, people who can benefit uh, first, probably people uh, who have some special conditions, for example, asthma. Uh, they will know uh, if uh, they have, or people who have allergies, if there for example. Are contaminants they will the know if there are mm -hmm. contaminants around here. So before the body starts reacting here, they can take uh, care and change. Is, is that technology already developed, or is this? This in the technology work? is to a very large right. extent already around or coming very close to broad use. Of course, for many medical applications, there is long mm -hmm. time uh, from the development of technology to approval uh, by FDA uh, right. here. So there may be some time here. But you see electronic devices becoming smaller and smaller every day, and to a large extent, it's a result of nanotechnology here. Smaller computer chips, smaller hard drives, flash memory cards, mm. 
Right. So all all uh, to non technology, uh, their existence and their uh, so present development. How small yeah. will we go? How small in terms of cell phones mm -hmm. and computers? Would well, you, would I don't you think uh, cell phones become smaller than they are, just because otherwise you will not be able to use them efficiently. <laughs> yes. What will happen? In the same size of the cell phone, mm. there will be many more functions. I see. Already now, you can have a digital camera there. Uh, you can have uh, your organizer. You can connect your cell phone to a computer and download mm -hmm. applications. In the future, you may have many more things there. You may be able to open uh, your garage door uh, with the same cell phone. Uh, your cell phone can store all personal information you will ever need and all information uh, that you have at work uh, and probably will be able uh, after a while to store the same amount of information in our desktop or laptop computers. So I think this is the way it goes. It may have many, many other uh, functions uh, as well. Uh, and uh, what scientists are looking for uh, often, for applications here, where can we use the small things to make our life uh, better? Right, right. And yet, I guess you can go too far. There seems to be a lot of hype attached to the field, uh, sort of mythology mm -hmm. as to where we could go. Um, this whole business of nanobots, Mm -hmm. I wonder if you would address those and perhaps some of the unrealistic mm -hmm. expectations that people have of nanotechnology. Well, um, there are predictions that nanotechnology can affect our lives uh, stronger than uh, computer and semiconductor technology. Mm -hmm. uh, time will show whether it's true or not. We have experienced a number of hypes in the past. Ceramic engines, uh, high temperature superconductors are among them. Uh, I believe in uh, the future of nanotechnology, uh, first of all, because this is a very, very broad area. Mm -hmm. This is a rather philosophy to engineering than really new field. Mm -hmm. The idea before was like making something. You take a large chunk of material and you machine it to create a certain component with the shape and properties you need. For example, a gear for a machine. Then you take several gears and you assemble a device. In nanotechnology, you start in a different way. You really build things, atom by atom. Mm. And things are so small, you cannot assemble them. So you really need to produce them together at the same uh, place. And you need to produce them right away with the properties that you need, with size of particles, shape of particles, location of particles, often when we talk about nanodevices, where we need them here. And applications are, as you see, from cosmetic industry to computer technology, definitely to aerospace areas and many, many other. So it means that even if 90% of things we are talking about right now will never materialize, mm -hmm. this 10%, if this 10% of ideas that are currently uh, flying around uh, will be used and products will appear, it will change our world dramatically already. But there are also some concerns with nanobots, for example, mm -hmm. that there will be self-replicating nanoparticles. Uh, now, when you say uh, nanotubes, could you define that? Yes. Yeah. And that relates mm -hmm. to the carbon? Is this something you yes. specifically work uh, with? This is yeah. uh, one of the topics of our research in my group. Uh, this we is at Drexel's Nanotechnology Institute? Yes, yeah. uh, both Drexel Nanotechnology Institute has several people working on nanotechnology. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also uh, have, uh, I think, very good uh, expertise in this area. Mm -hmm. And we do both. We produce new nanotubes and we develop nanotube-based devices. So what are nanotubes? Mm -hmm. These are tubes uh, that are created by rolling in a seamless uh, tube a single layer of atoms. So if you take one layer, atomic layer of graphite, mm -hmm. and graphite is a common material used, for example, in pencil leads here, mm -hmm. and separate one single layer and roll it in a similar